So how does, uh, we were talking about Seafair earlier, how does a company like Seafair fit that bill? You know, what's going on with them? What are you excited about for people that have never heard it before? So Matt introduced me to Kyle, the CEO of Seafair. When was it? Uh, 2019? I think it was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Around it was when, around then. It was. It was right around the time. It was right before 20, he and Tim met. I think maybe twenty. I don't know somewhere around then. Yeah. So the first time, I'm so um so yeah, Matt and I we met before, and he said, "Hey, I want you to meet this this founder. Uh, he's a really cool company. It's a treasure hunting company, and obviously me loving ocean history and science. So you know that's pretty cool." We met in a, a restaurant somewhere between uh, Vero Beach and, and and Melbourne. I still remember that meal. Yeah, damn good. <laughs> it was like a Brazilian place, something like that, right? But I was on, yeah, and I was on the water, and, yeah. and you and Kyle were talking. And I was just eating. I was just, <laughs> just doing this, Selling. like, mm, 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 yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So, um, <laughs> and Kyle, obviously being you know a super nice guy, you know, had, a, had a great lunch, and I asked him, so how does this work? And he goes, well, we have this, we have a boat, and we have a, a potential wreck site, or no, we have a wreck site with potentially treasure on it. And we have a mag, a magnetometer, which we, which we basically pull behind the boat and it shows us all the iron parts. Um, and then we go back and dig up those iron parts and hope that next to those iron parts, we're going to find silver or gold. So, okay, well, okay. And then ask, so how many hits do you get uh, on a wreck site? And I don't remember, I don't remember the exact I think that's like right. a thousand. It, it's yeah. So I'm asking like how how many can you like dig up in a, in a year? Again, to, doing the math in your head bro. to verify. Yeah. He goes like fifty to hundred. I said, well, you're gonna need ten years, in the best case scenario, to figure out whether or not you have treasure on the site. And if you're not, if you don't run on money beforehand, I said, you know that's. I mean, cool, but it's not really something I would invest in. It seems to me like playing a lottery kind of thing because you're not, looking, you're not really looking directly for treasure. You're looking for other stuff that may or may not be close to treasure. And also a nail much further up in the, in the, in the sand may look, a nail probably not, but like a big spike may look similar to like a cannon much further down. On this Mac survey, and Mac also depends how high you fly and all those variables. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, this is. I'm sorry, but there's nothing, nothing more to do. And also, remember, I invest in about 0.5 percent of all the stuff I see. So I invest in every 200th company I, I see on average. Um, just bear in mind, because I'm just you know, and I tell people that because they they think they meet and or talk or call or email, and that's like there's a 50 50 chance. No. So anyway, then and they said, you know, I'm sorry, but it's not, not what I do. And then they come back to me and say, hey, <laughs> yeah. it's now a different model or now a different, or not, or wait, wait, something like a new technology we're building or something like that. So then I listened to that part. I said, you know what? And then they told me, well, and I, met, I think I met Tim. You met, yeah, I brought, I brought you yeah, to meet Tim. Yeah, I think point. we probably, I met Tim because he, he, I think you wanted me to meet Tim I wanted you to see what he was doing and putting together. Cause exactly. It, to me, it, to me, that that's what changed the whole dynamic. Yeah. The whole dynamic. And was, it does. Was yes. Yeah. No, you have to see it. Yeah. Um, you have to really have to see to believe it. Yep. And really have to meet Tim to believe that he's capable of doing what he's supposed or he says he's doing. Right. So I met uh, uh, Tim, Kyle, and, and you, and and then they explained to me how what they want to build, the sea searcher. That's basically and that's many other much better videos out there. I can explain it to a five-year-old and I'll try that now. It's basically a sonar that gives you an underground undersand image and there's a metal discriminator with help of AI and machine learning discriminates between different metal types. Mm. So the idea is, the idea back then was we built that and we can say, okay, all this is iron. This is, and right here is silver and right here is gold. So we could basically fly over the site and not spend 10 years, but literally a few days to determine whether or not there's gold there. Or silver or treasure, whatsoever. Right. And you know, now, since my background is, has always been tech-enabled companies where companies get an, a, a, an advantage using technology, this is really interesting. 
So I started to slowly invest um, a little bit of money. And I, I, the more I got involved with Kyle and, and Tim, and the more I came to meetings, the more I, I kept investing in the company. And so, because I saw the progress, right? Usually, what I do is uh, I, I, if I can, if it, if this is possible in this situation, I try to go on with a little bit. And then if I see progress and see the right things happening, mm-hmm. I keep going. So yeah, I, I kept investing in Seafair for for ever since then, and 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 kept and, and together with with, with Kyle and, and and Tim, um, you know, try to help as much as I can. Again, I couldn't help much with the technology side because Tim doesn't really need help. He needs just just time and to do it. I could help Kyle with uh, expanding the network mm-hmm. back to the world again, um, so that we could easily more easier easier raise funds that we need. Yep. Mm. So I opened up my network um, in, in Vera Beach, abroad in Germany, and we had a lot of more investors involved um, um, to make sure the company never runs out of funding. Because that was one of my main... So when I looked at the company, I, I had like three risks uh, identified. The first risk I thought was only like theoretical. It's like there's no treasure out there whatsoever. That once you, you know a little bit about history and about how Spain traveled those those shores for 300 years and uh, lost like 10% of the ships. So there's like hundreds if not thousands of boats, ships out there. Uh, and a good amount of them had treasure on them. Yeah, that's that's uh, that was a strange thing to hear f- the first time for me is that it's an unmistakable fact that that right. stuff is out there. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. Correct. Uh, that was my first thought because you know, I didn't know back then, right? I, I had no idea until you always know it's called Treasure Coast, but nobody really thinks about it. So anyway, and then that's my first risk. And that risk, I think, is being, te- is being taken care of. Second risk, I, I, I said, you know, maybe this just doesn't work. I mean, at the very beginning, it was a theory that the machine learning and those algorithms could determine whether or not this curve, the metal discriminated seas, is gold, silver, brass, aluminum, whatever. And that was a theory. It now it looks like it can actually do that. You can determine whether it's gold, silver, or whatever. Um, and the last risk, was that they might run out of funding. So I thought about it. I said, you know, A, if I open up a network and if we can deliver those results and show that the tech works, we are not going to run out of funding. Okay. And we have done that. Yeah. And so Matt's been a big part of that with legacy network. Mm. I mean, you, you raised most of the money. Uh, and, and, and I opened up, I added a few people from Vera Beach, from, from, from Germany, from, from wherever. So we all, you know, so it's a really a group effort. And that's you know, the power of a network. It takes a village. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, and that's what we're always telling, like, uh, the people that join our group is bend your network to our network. I mean, that's that's when it gets really, really powerful. Yeah. And that's what Max did. Like, when Max said, yeah, first, you you actually you actually joined our group um, before you became a partner. And, but he, yeah. he, he's all in. Like, he was, he just, he just said, okay, I believe in this company. I believe in this company. And he he bends his network, his capabilities, his personal funding, and the funding of the, the people that he brings to to make and the thing happen. The and common it, goal, yeah. And that's yeah. yeah. And also, again, again so it's um, I looked at it like I've seen many many companies in the last fifteen years, and they all have a certain potential. But the way how CFA was structured, i.e., being a penny stock company, being a public company. And having had to to raise all the money all those years to survive, they had to give out more shares, more shares, more shares. So they were very, very attractively priced. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, okay, at like back then, zero zero two, zero zero three, uh, zero zero four, even back then when we invested, um, that was it was like a valuation of like you know fifteen million dollars. And I said, okay, the potential out there per rack. Is I mean I mean there are wrecks out there who which are, which are worth fifteen billion dollars, but let's not go that far. Let's look at the Atosha, which was found of Key West in the eighties, and that was like a four hundred million dollar wreck in the eighties, where silver was at like five bucks mm-hmm. an ounce. Now we're at twenty five dollars an ounce, so that would be times five, so that would be a two billion dollar wreck. Let's just discount that half. Let's just put another layer in on it. It's a billion dollar wreck. So if the company founded today, 
uh, it's worth, you know, you, you invested like 15, 20 million dollars and you're, you're at the billion dollar, it's a 50, 50 times your money back. Mm. And that's just one wreck. If you then add the fact, and by the way, your help with the channel and YouTube channel is helping a lot to get people to the word out. If people, when people realize, well, shit, this wasn't luck. Mm -hmm. Those guys built the technology and the, and the processes to repeat this over and over again. Mm -hmm. Then you should be worth more than one wreck. Right. So I think, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, but I mean, sometimes I'm I'm optimistic, but I don't know, four, five, six billion dollars valuation isn't yeah. really that crazy to me at this no. point. No. Then you would be at one dollar a share. Mm. So I figured, okay, you know, this is a pretty big upside. Yep. And again, the worst thing that can happen, my money's my money's gone. Would, would I survive without the money? Yeah, nothing would really change. So why not take the risk? Mm. 